abundant. Abundant. Say abundant. 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 So, when people think about abundant, they think about a lot. Like this is something that is a lot. But abundant is not a lot. Abundant is much, much, much more than a lot. A lot is just like usually something that is a lot in quantity. But abundance is a lot or is lots of quantity and high in quality. So it's not just quantity, it is quality. A good example is, let me say, I give you a, a small, a small size pizza. Okay, yum. But there's like just cheese on it. But instead of just giving you one small pizza, I give you, for you, one person, I give seven pizzas with five different types of meat on it, with garlic and herbs and olive oil and etc. Different cheeses, avocado, so it's healthy. Eh? So, what is that? For one person, what's that? An abundant. An abundant. Because it's not just a lot, it's, it's also good in quality. So the same way, when our God blesses us, He blesses us in abundance. He blesses us in an overflow. Because abundance is not just much, much, much more. It's more than much more. It's the overflow. Abundant is the overflow. And the overflow means that it overflows. There's more and more. You cannot almost contain it. That's an abundance. And when you receive something in abundance, what do you do? You go, wow. Wow. If you don't get the reaction, wow, then maybe it's not an abundance. Because when you get something in abundance, you will go, wow. Wow, wow, wow. And the, it's interesting if you look at the word in Hebrew, it's shuk, shuk. And that's why many times, I don't know if I'm the only one that does this, but when something surprised me, it's like, I'm like, sure. Like, sure. Do you guys also say sure? So that's where sure comes from, shuk, shuk. It's wow, sure, sure, sure. You know, wow, wow. So that's an abundance. And let me give you guys an example of where Jesus blesses us in abundance. In John 2 verse 1, it says, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and His disciples were invited to the wedding. Verse 3, And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to Him, They have no wine. Jesus said to a woman, What does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. So whatever Jesus says to you, do it. Verse 6. Now there was set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. So 20 to 30 gallons is between 90 to 140 liters. And there's six, six of those. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And He said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that, had made, that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And He said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. Verse 11. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested His glory. That glory means manifested goodness. And His disciples believed in Him. Wow! So, what's amazing? times 6, that's 720 liters of not just, because what makes it even more special is not that he produced so much wine. Firstly, it was water. He took water. You give Jesus water and he makes it into wine. Okay, that's already amazing. Yeah. 
So even if he just made one liter from water into wine, that would have been amazing. But he took water, he turned it into wine, and not just any wine, the best wine. He could have produced ordinary wine. Hey? And he could have given them just a few liters to keep them going until the wedding is finished. But he gave them an overflow. 720 liters of the best quality wine ever. And you know what's amazing about this? Is that this doesn't just happen, or didn't just happen for the wedding couple, the, the, the couple there. It can happen for us, because Jesus is the same, yesterday, today, and forever. And when He blesses, our God blesses with an abundance. He gives, His blessings are, when, when He gives, He gives in great quality and great quantity. So He's generous and He gives with great style. Eh? He gives with great style. He doesn't just give ordinary wine, He gives the best quality wine. Hallelujah. Hey guys listening. So let's take a look at John 10 verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. So when they're stealing, when they're killing, and when they're destroying, you know the origin is not from Jesus. It's from the enemy, from the thief. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So Jesus says, I have come that you may have life, but have it more abundantly. So life with great quality. So what does that mean? You're not just going to go through life just scraping through, you know. And quantity, you'll live until Jesus comes. Until 120 or until Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Say, more abundantly. So when our God gives, He gives generously and with great style. Hallelujah. And we can know that when our God blesses us, we do not have to worry. We do not have to worry that He's going to not bless us. We know that when He, when we've prayed, when we've asked Him to bless us, He's going to answer and that answer is going to manifest in an abundant and generous and awesome style. Hallelujah. So we can trust Jesus. We can trust Jesus. So what do you say? When you've asked God for something, and do it like Mary. You don't even have to make it complicated. And go, our Father who art in heaven, and you say the whole prayer, and then you go and you read all the Psalms, or you, like some, you have to get some special thing. You just go to Jesus there's no more wine. There's no more wine. You know? That's what Mary did. She went to Jesus and said, there's no more wine. So that's how you go to Jesus. You say, Lord, I need, to have, I need a job. Or, Lord, I'm not feeling well today. You know what? You go to Jesus. You tell Him. You go to Jesus because why? You can trust Him. And when He gives, He gives with generously and with great style. Hallelujah. And then, when you've asked Him, be patient. Because when you've asked, He has heard you. The Lord hears the prayer of the righteous. He's heard you, and then you know that He will answer at the right time and in the right way. And His, and His manifestation of your answer is going to be awesome. Hallelujah. So we are busy with thanksgiving offerings. That's the series I'm busy with. So let's move on to the next verse. Okay? Leviticus 7 verse 28. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, He who offers the sacrifice of his thanksgiving offering to the Lord shall bring his offering to the Lord from the sacrifice of his thanksgiving offering. So if, you, if that's confusing, all it's saying is you give your thanksgiving offering, and then out of the thanksgiving offering, which is Jesus, you... Bring the offering to the Lord. So you take a portion out of the thanksgiving offering and then you give it to the Lord. And what portion out of the thanksgiving offering do you bring to the Lord? The breast and the shoulder. So the breast represents what? Love. The breast is love, right? Yes. And then the shoulder is what? Strength. Power. 
like doing stuff, governance. The governance will be upon his shoulder, reigning. You reign through your shoulder. And then the heart or the breast is love because it's over the heart. Yes. So what do you do? The thanksgiving offering, you bring a thanksgiving offering out of that thanksgiving offering. What is it? Love. So it's the breast and the thigh. The thigh in the, obviously, a goat. Lamb or an ox doesn't have shoulders, just has legs. So it's talking about its front front thigh, its shoulder. Because in the King James it will say shoulder. Okay. Okay. But here you see, we, who's who, which, the sacrifice, who's the sacrifice, who's this thanksgiving? We all find the Omega, our left half. So he who offers Jesus, the thanksgiving of Jesus, the thanksgiving of Jesus offering to the Lord shall bring his thanks, Jesus offering to the Lord from the sacrifice of his thanksgiving offering. So it's going back to Jesus because Jesus is how you give thanksgiving to the Lord. Without Jesus, you can't give a thanksgiving offering. Hallelujah. Next. His own hands shall bring the offerings. Now, what offerings of His? Jesus. You see again? The Alpha and Omega. Made by fire to the Lord. The fat. So now what out of the thanksgiving offering do you give? The fat. The fat. And what's the fat? The fat is the... The, you can, the best part of the animal. It is the, the revelational part of the animal. So what is it saying? You bring the revelation of Jesus. You bring the best part of Jesus. The best, the revelation of Jesus with the breast, the love. He shall bring that the breast may be waved as a wave offering before the Lord. Now notice that the breast, the love, the breast offering, and whose, whose breast is this? Jesus loves. See the Alpha and Omega. The Alpha and Omega is Jesus, right? So the Alpha and Omega breast may be waved as a wave offering before the Lord. Now how do you do a wave offering? Go like this, and up and down. That's a wave offering. So you take the breast, the love, and then you move it like this. So it's showing the finished work of Jesus. That's the Bible says, in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and gave us His Son as a perpetuation for our sins. 1 John 4. Yes? So that's what you do. And now what's amazing is, go down. And the priest shall burn the fat on the altar. But the breast shall be Aaron's and his son. We are part of the, we are kings and priests in Christ. Amen. One, is it Second Peter, one Peter, I can't remember now. What's it? It's one Peter two verse nine. It says we are a royal priesthood. And Revelation one, verse six and five verse ten says we are kings and priests in Christ. Now, who gets the love of Jesus or the breast offering? Who gets that part of the offering? The kings and priests. The priests get the love. Amen. Hallelujah. But the fat gets burnt on the altar. And what's the fat? The revelation of Jesus. So you burn the revelation on the altar. And what does the altar make? It makes smoke. It makes an incense. Amen. So that God can appreciate it. So when you pray, when you come to God with prayers, why are you saying my prayers can be answered? Because, it's not because of who I am, because of who Jesus is. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. That's a fact. Because my prayers can be answered because in Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah. You guys understand that? Okay. Hope okay, I hope you guys understand. So anyway, now Leviticus 7 verse 32. Also, the right fire. So you guys saw out of the pool, you take the breast, the breast we get, the love we get, we get the love of God. Amen. Because what does the Bible say? As Jesus is, so are we in this world. We get that. Because love has been perfected in this, but as Jesus is, so are we in this world. 1 John 4 verse 17. But now, we get the breast, but what about the fire? 
What about the right thigh? Also, the right thigh. And whose right thigh is this? Whose shoulder is this? The Alpha and Omega shoulder. And you guys, if you're like just taking it like, oh, Alpha and Omega, Alpha and Omega. This appears, appears very rarely in the Bible. So this is a special verse. Okay? It's a special verse where the Alpha and Omega, where Jesus puts His signature. Okay? Because the Alpha and Omega is Jesus' signature. So also, the right five you shall give to the priest as a heave offering. What's a heave offering? Going up and down. Like this. Just straight to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Offering from the sacrifice of your thanksgiving offerings. Now, okay, go up, okay, yeah, let's just go up first. Also the right fire you shall give to the priest. So notice the priest gets the right fire as a heave offering. And we're going to see just now why he gets the right fire. But what's significant about the right fire also? Right, rep, uh, I'm probably going to say it, I'm going to say it now, now. Right is righteousness, the right side. Okay, we'll get to fire just now. But what's amazing about this? How do you eat or partake of the right fire? It's through the communion. We're going to get to the communion in a future sermon. But here, how do you eat now the right fire? How do you bring the right fire as a thanksgiving offering or out of the thanks? How do you get the right fire? That it can benefit you. That you can appropriate it. Because here, you bring the thanksgiving. You're bringing the thanksgiving. But out of the thanksgiving, you get the right fire. Guys following, you bring the bull, out of the bull you take the shoulder. Okay? Guys following. Now, what is the shoulder? What is the right fire? Go down. Also, Jesus, the right fire you shall give. It's oil. The anointing oil. And like we said, it represents power. It represents righteousness. The Eve offering represents raising up. Rising up. I'll give you this. I'll say it again just now. Five R's. So right five, five R's. It's raining. It's resurrection life. It's rising up. Raising up. And what's the other one? Uh, okay, well, I'll say it just now again. But oil is the right five. And you approach. So when you get the thanks giving offering, you're saying, Lord, you are Lord of abundance. I trust you. What do you do? You anoint. Because why? You need the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is with you, but you're thanking the Lord, appropriating that the Holy Spirit is with you as a faith response. Next. So let me show you oil. Shemin. Okay, I could have just showed you that, but I just want to prove to you guys that it is there if someone asks you. So oil, Shemin. So oil is Shemin, and it's spelled Shin Mem Nun. If you guys get confused with Hebrew or freak out, just... Just uh, close your eyes for this part and I'll tell you when to open your eyes again. So here's Shin, there's Mem, and there's Nun. Okay, now let's find it in the Hebrew written there, in acrostics. Acrostics mean that there's equal distance number sequencing. So if I write my name Sam, I'll say S, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, 1, 2, 3, 4, M. It spells Sam. So now we're looking for Shemen. Okay? Also, the right fire you shall give to the priest as a heave offering. Okay? Let's try and find it. Go down. So here. Also, the right fire. So yes, Jesus. Jesus is the right fire. Alpha and Omega. Guys, see? Now. Whoa. Shin. One, two, three, four. Mem. One, two, three, four. Noon. Shemen. So the right fire is the anointing oil. It's for oil. Hallelujah. And what is the oil? It's the working, manifested presence and manifested goodness of the Holy Spirit. Okay, next. So the right fire is the anointing oil. But now, let's take a look here. He among the sons of Aaron who offers the blood. So who gets the right fire? Who can receive the right fire? Those who are blood conscious. Who know that the blood of Jesus is covering them. And I talked about it in 1 John 1 verse 7. But the blood, you need to know that the blood of Jesus covers you. The blood of Jesus is flowing over you. Why? Because then you're forgiveness conscious. You know you've been cleansed. You know you've been forgiven. And when you pray, 
You don't just pray and say, no, I'm trusting the Lord because I have done everything right. No, you know it's in Jesus' name. It's because of Jesus. And you know what Jesus has done. And you meditate upon Jesus. And you receive knowledge of Jesus. And how do you receive knowledge of Jesus? Through grace. And the more you have knowledge of Jesus, the more you grow in grace, the more you grow in peace. So he among the sons of Aaron who offers the blood. So the blood. You see the blood? And whose blood is this? Jesus' blood. Again, another signature. Awesome. Another signature. And the fat. Whose fat? Jesus' fat. So Jesus, revelation of Jesus. Amen. Shall have the right fire for his pot. So you get the right fire. You get the oil when you off when you have the blood consciousness. And when you have the revelation of Jesus. If you want to get more revelation of Jesus, just start by reading the book of Revelation. You'll get lots of revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then you'll see there that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. In the first chapter he says it a few times. So now here, again, shall have the right five for his part. Shall have the right five for his part is oil. Anointing oil. Show them the proof. So here, shall have. Shin. One, two, three, four. Mem. Wow. One, two, three, four. Noon. Am I right? Shin. Mem. Noon. Awesome. Next. Okay, so we see that the right fire is the anointing oil. And like I said, the anointing of God is the manifested presence, the manifested goodness, and the working of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the part of the Godhead that empowers us for service. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you can't live the Christian life to its fullest. And God is not asking us to live for Him. God is not asking us to live for Him. He is asking us to let Him live through us. Go read Galatians 2 verse 20. Because the Christian life is not a changed life. It is an exchanged life. The Holy Spirit partners with you. The Holy Spirit lives through you. You need to partner with the Holy Spirit to live your life. And this can only be accomplished... When the Holy Spirit is leading and empowering us, we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and just for time's sake, I'm just going to start reading from my notes so that I don't say too much extra stuff. So even, like, we can look at Jesus. Because if you think, I don't need the anointing, I don't need the Holy Spirit to help me with everything. Wrong. Even Jesus didn't begin His ministry until He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And He was the Son of God. He was the sinless Son of God. So how much more do we need to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit in our daily lives? So today, be conscious. Be conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit in you and upon you and expect to supernaturally guide and empower you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's take a look at Leviticus 7 verse 33 again. So like you guys can see, Jesus' blood. And then you receive the oil. Why? Because the oil follows the blood. The oil follows the blood. So as soon as you are blood conscious, forgiveness conscious, what happens? The Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit is upon you. And He's already in you, but He's upon you. And then you have the anointing to live life to its fullest. To live the abundant life. To live the abundant life. Because why? Let's take a look at the word for fire. I'm not going to give you, I already give you the Hebrew. Shuk. Shuk. And it's interesting because, how do you say this part here? Shoulder. It's the shuk. Shoulder. But now, shuk. Shoulder, root word is overflow. Ha! To be abundant, to give abundance to. So the oil, the, sh- the, the oil in the shuk, in the shoulder, gives you abundance, gives you overflow. Hallelujah. 
So let's take a look at, so the right side, go down, the right side leads to abundance. So when you're on the right side, abundance flows. Why? Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And a simple example, an easy example is if you take a look at John 21. And notice who's this? This is the resurrected Christ. So how did the resurrected Christ appear to Peter and them again? He gave them an abundance. So he said, so they were fishing, they didn't catch anything. Why? Because Jesus wasn't, wasn't there to help them. You can't do anything without Jesus. So when Jesus told them and he said to them, cast the net on the right side, on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish, an overflow and abundance. Why? Because of the right side, the righteousness. Hallelujah. Next. So Jesus came to give us abundance. Can I get an amen for that? Jesus came to give abundance. Let's read John 10 verse 10 again. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. So in connection with the oil, let's take a look at more uh, connections of abundance with oil. Next, Psalms 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over and overflow. Next, Joel 2 verse 24. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow. And this word is shook. So shook. The vats shall shook. So shook. There's lots of oil. Shook. And the vat shall shook, overflow, abundance with new wine and oil. Hallelujah. That's it. This is almost like a prophecy of Jesus' miracle in John 2, where there's an overflow of wine. 720 liters of the best quality wine. Hallelujah. So Jesus gives an overflow. And when Jesus gives, He gives an overflow. So when Jesus gives, He gives 120%. He gives the 120%. And then He gives the overflow, the abundance. Now where is the overflow, the abundance? In the Holy Spirit. The working and the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. The anointing oil. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's take a look quickly. Are you guys awake? Quickly at some abundance. At some abundance because we want abundance in every area and the Holy Spirit the anointing oil gives abundance in every area so abundant healing abundant healing Isaiah 20 30 verse 26 says moreover the light of the moon will be as the light of the Sun and the light of the Sun will be sevenfold it's talking about healing I've explained this before as the light of seven days so sevenfold is an abundance, 700%. In the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of His people and yields the stroke of their wound. And also, I'm not going to show you the Hebrew for time's sake, but written here, abundance, anointing oil. Anointing oil. Next. Also here, written here, anointing oil in the Hebrew. Surely our sicknesses He has borne, and our pains He has carried them. Anointing oil. Hallelujah. Abundance of healing. Now abundant protection in these verses written in Hebrew. Anointing oil. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Notice the wording. No evil. No, do you guys? Un- no, no. We need to be people of our word. When we say no, we won't do it. When we say yes, we'll do it. The Bible says no evil. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague. So that means no plague. No plague. Come near your dwelling. Dwelling is your body, your family. Amen. For ye shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in some of your ways. No. All your ways. All your ways. 
So anoint yourself when you leave your house. Amen. Anoint your car. Anoint your... If, you, if you're going to write an exam, if you, your children are going to write an exam, tell them to anoint their exam paper. Yeah. Anoint their answers. Anoint their pens. Yeah. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Next. Isaiah 54 verse 7. No weapon. Not some weapon. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue, not just some tongues, every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So when you declare, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, anoint yourself. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Next. So, abundant healing, abundant protection, and abundant restoration. And what's amazing about abundant restoration is this verse. It's, I, I didn't check it, but I, I remember I preached on this. It's a menorah. Okay? And in the middle, in the middle, who's always in the midst? Who's always in the middle? The Alpha and Omega. And what's interesting about this verse, and being found, he, and in context, is talking about a thief. So in the midst, who's in the middle? Jesus. And when he was crucified, where was he in the midst of? Two thieves. Two thieves. So in the midst, and being found, he, a thief, repays sevenfold all the substances of his house he gives. So Jesus was put in the midst of two thieves. And then as a thief, what happens? Jesus gives all the substance of his house. So when you lose something, when something is stolen from you, what happens? He gives all the substance of his house to repay what you've lost. But how much? Not just 100%. Abundance. Sevenfold. 700%. And how's Jesus when he gives? He gives generously. 700 fold, but with great style, great quality. Doesn't just give you a small pizza, it gives you seven large piece pizzas and everything on. Hallelujah. Because here, repays is the root word for shalom. And what's shalom? Shalom is health. So when Jesus gives, he gives you abundant health. When Jesus gives you, He gives you abundant completeness. When Jesus gives, He gives you abundant, um, abundant safety. He gives you abundant soundness. If your mind is in depression or whatever. He gives you abundant soundness. He gives you abundant peace from war, from attacks. Peace with God. Abundant peace with God. Hallelujah. You don't, God is not angry with you. Why? Because Jesus has given you abundant peace with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. An abundant provision. We've, I think we've talked about that already. In John 21 and John 2, Psalms 23. And abundant victory. Abundant truth. What's awesome about abundant victory? You can go take all the stories in the Bible. Look at Samson. When he was the anointed of God. And when the Holy Spirit came upon him. What happens? He killed 1,000 soldiers easily. And what's amazing, if you look at olden day wrestlers, what did they do? They put oil on their bodies. Yes? And boxes. What did boxes do? They put oil on their bodies. Why? Because when the, the punch comes, it slides off of them. When you try to grab the person, what happens? You can't grip them because they are oily. You can just see those Philistines trying to stab, stab uh, Samson. It's like... And they're like, oily. Ah, he's so oily. And with that long hair, think how ugly, all that oil on his hair. No, because the Holy Spirit was upon him. He became oily. So they couldn't grab hold of him. They couldn't grab hold of him. And what happens? No weapon formed against him prospered. He took them out. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit makes it that the enemy can't get a hold on you. The enemy can't get a hold on you because you are oiled. You are oiled all over. So if you use your imagination and you see that blood flowing over you from heaven, the open door flowing over you. See also the oil flowing over you. See the oil flowing over you. The enemy can't take a hold of you. Why? 
Because you're too oily. You're too oily. And what does the Bible say? I'm too anointed to be disappointed. Hey? Hallelujah. So Jesus answers you with great generosity and great style. Hallelujah. And how do I know that? How do I know that He answers me with great generosity and great style? Because John 10, 10. Remember 10, 10. John 10, 10. I have come that they may have life. Let's say this one together. I have come that they may have life. And that they may have it more abundantly. Abundantly. So Jesus loves you very much. And you don't have to worry. Bring everything to Him. Invite. Because why? Why was the couple at, in Cana's wedding so successful? Because they invited Jesus. They just invited Jesus. And the wedding was joyful and awesome. Why? Because they invited Jesus. So when you invite Jesus, what happens? That's the best move. You've invited Jesus. He's going to make... And when you tell Him, be like Mary. There's no more wine. What happens? Jesus is going to take that request. He's going to answer it. And the manifestation, even if the manifestation doesn't come straight away, you need to be patient and know that the Lord's going to answer it generously and with great style. Hallelujah. Awesome. And when you've asked Him that, when you've asked Jesus something, anoint that area. If, it, if you can anoint it, anoint it. Or anoint yourself, anoint your ear. Because then you are saying, Lord, I trust you. I trust that you are going to answer it in abundance. Why? Because the right shoulder. You are the right shoulder. And you answer in overflow. Hallelujah. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you do not have anointing oil, you just get a small bottle and you put olive oil in it. Or any oil, just not car oil or something like that. It's just olive oil I use. And then how do you say to the pot? What did I say? We are kings and priests. The priest gets, the king and priest gets the oil, gets the right fire. Yes? And then what do you say? You say, Lord, thank you that you were crushed for me. Thank you that I set this apart as a holy anointing oil. And then you use that to apply the oil. And then every time when you apply it, you just say, thank you, Lord, for your abundant healing, your abundant protection, your abundant deliverance, your abundant redemption. If there's a curse, because go read Deuteronomy 28, all those curses. You've been, you've been redeemed because of Jesus' work. And if you look at that, He hung on a tree. Cursed is all who hung on a tree. Anointing oil written in Hebrew. So you take the anointing oil and you say, I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm redeemed from sicknesses. I'm redeemed from plagues. Hallelujah. Awesome. Praise the Lord.